द मॉरियन डायनेस्टी वॉज रेकग्नाइज फॉर एस्टेब्लिशिंग मोनाट्री इन इंडिया द मॉरियन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज डिस्क्राइब्ड इन डेप्थ इन कौटिल्या अर्थशास्त्र दिस वॉज सीन टू बी द मोस्ट रिलायबल सोर्स फॉर इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द मॉरियन एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन मैगस्थनीज इंडिका लाइक अर्थशास्त्र शेड्स इन साइट ऑन द मॉरियन गवर्नमेंट इकोनॉमिक्स ट्रेड एंड सोसाइटी Chandragupta Maurya established the Mauryan Empire in 322 BCE which lasted until 180 BCE except for Tamil Nadu and Kerala the Mauryan Empire spanned the whole Indian subcontinent the Mauryan government had a large bureaucracy that was responsible for many aspects of life the empire Patliputra served as the imperial capital and the empire was divided into four provinces Toshali Ujjain, Suvarnagiri and Takshila are the four regional capitals according to Ashokan edicts. The provincial administration was overseen by the Kumar, royal prince who acted as the king's agent in the provinces. The Kumar received assistance from the Mahamatryas and the council of ministers. At the imperial level, the emperor and his mantri parishad matched this organizational arrangement. The Mauryans developed a complex form of money minting. Silver and copper made up the majority of the coinage. There were also some gold coins in circulation. The coins were widely utilized in trade and commerce. Central government. The Mauryan administration was notable for its centralization. It all began with the emperor wielding immense power and exercising complete authority. The Mantri Parishad or Council of Ministers governed the state and the ministers were called as mantris at the period. This Mantri Council was presided over by the Mantri Parishad Adhyaksh. Mahamatas are honorary titles granted to some of the country's most powerful leaders. Amatyas or high ranking officials in administrative and judicial offices were also present. The adhyakshas were divided into departments with a secretariat established. To maintain smooth operations, the government monitored and documented production, births and deaths, industries, foreigners, product trade and sale and sales tax collection. Many adhyakshas are mentioned in Arthashastra for trade, storehouses, gold, ships, agriculture, cows, horses, city chariots mint infantry and so on yuktas are subordinate officers in charge of the empire's income rajuks were land measuring and boundary fixing officers sanstha adhyaksh were the mint superintendent samast adhyaksh were the market superintendent shulk adhyaksh was toll superintendent sita adhyaksh was agriculture superintendent navadhyaksh is the ships superintendent Law adhyaksh is iron superintendent potwa adhyaksh is weights and measures superintendent mine superintendent was nagar adhyaksh vyavaharik mahamatra was the member of the judiciary and public relation officers is polisanj the administration was in charge of birth and death registration foreigners industry commerce manufacturing and sales commodities and sales collection military administration senapati known as the right hand of the emperor was the military's commander in chief he was appointed by the emperor the army was paid in cash a board of 30 men oversees military administration which is organized into six committees infantry cavalry elephants chariots navy and transport good purushas detectives mentions two sort of detectives sansthans that is stationary and sanchuries those who were wandering the mauryan administration was notable for maintaining a large military kotilya empowered all four varnas to serve in the military pliny claims that the mauryas maintained a force of 6 lakh men the mauryans also had a navy in their military all of the major cities have police stations bandhangar was the name of the jail while charak was the name of the lockup justice system the judicial system was under the ruler's control the gramvarda 
एंड नगर व्यवहारिक महामात्रास रेस्पेक्टिवली सेटल्ड कॉन्फ्लिक्स इन विलेजेस एंड टाउन्स राजुकास हु वर रफली इक्वल टू आवर करंट डिस्ट्रिक्ट मजिस्ट्रेट्स वर फाउंड अक्रॉस द स्टेट कौटिल्या मेंशंस टू अदर सोर्ट्स ऑफ कोर्ट्स धर्मास्थिया दैट इज सिविल कोर्ट एंड कंटक शोधन दैट इज क्रिमिनल कोर्ट लोकल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन Aside from the urban zone the empire was split into four provinces each led by a prince or a member of the royal family kumar or aryaputra the northern province uttarpath which had takshila as its capital the western province avantirath which had ujjain as its capital the eastern province prachapath which had toshali as its center and the southern province dakshinapath which had suvarngiri as its capital were ashoka's four provinces the kingdom's headquarters were in magadh's central region with patliputra as its capital some of the viceroy's officers such as mahamatas who went on tour every 5 years were appointed by him the village was the smallest administrative entity gramik was the head of the villages and had a lot of liberty as a leader the province governors or district magistrates were known as pradeshiks the tax collectors who reported to pradeshiks were known as thaniks Fort governors were known as Durgpal frontier governors were Akshpatal and general accountants were Lipikars revenue administration Samharta was the head of the revenue department Sannidata was another significant official who was the treasurer land irrigation shops customs woods ferries mining and pastures all generated revenue Artist license payments were collected and fines were levied in the courts. One sixth of the outpass was used to generate the majority of the land revenue. Espionage. The Mauryas had a well-developed espionage system. Spies provided information to the emperor on the bureaucracy and markets. There were two kinds of spies: samsthan, that is stationary, and sanchari, who were moving around. Good purushas were covert agents or investigators. The Mahamatyap Sarp ruled over them. These agents were chosen from various social groups. There were additional agents known as Vishkanyas, the poisonous girls. The economy of modern dynasty. For the first time in South Asia, political and military stability allowed for the creation of a single economic structure as well as greater trade and commerce resulting in increased agricultural productivity hundreds of kingdoms many small armies powerful regional chiefs and internecine strife gave place to a centralized administration that was more disciplined Farmers were freed from the tax and harvest collection responsibilities of provincial rulers opting instead for a centrally regulated strict but fair taxation system prescribed by the Arthashastra principles Chandragupta Maurya established a single currency across India and a network of provincial governors and administrations as well as a civil service ensuring that merchants farmers and traders were treated fairly and securely the mauryan army defeated several gangs of thieves regional private armies and powerful chiefs who attempted to establish their own dominion in particular areas mauryan dynasty trade silk and textiles spices and exotic delicacies were among india's exports with increased commerce with the mauryan empire the outside world gained access to new scientific knowledge and technology in addition ashoka funded the building of hundreds of roads rivers canals hospitals rest shops and other public works projects in many aspects the mauryan empire's economic state parallels that of the roman empire some centuries later both had substantial commercial relations and institutions that were akin to companies if you want to know more on any other topic please leave it in the comment box so that i can come back with it if you have liked this episode please like share and subscribe thank you